Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be my unboxing and setup for the brand new MacBook Pro. The model I went with is the 16 inch in silver and this is actually my first silver MacBook Pro in a little over six years. I'm in a bit of a transition period right now of switching all of my Apple products over to silver from Space Gray. So I can't wait to unbox this and show you guys what the new MacBook Pro looks like. Apple didn't really make a lot of design changes on the new M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pro. Pros, but there is a bit of a spec bump when it comes to performance between the two chips. The model I got has a 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU, a 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display, and I got the one terabyte storage option with 16 gigs of RAM. So guys, this MacBook Pro is going to absolutely crush anything that I can throw at it. I'm really excited to use it and I'm wondering if there's going to be a pretty substantial difference between the M1 Pro 16 inch that I recently had, or if it's going to feel relatively the same. Now I will be giving those opinions once I do a full review after I've used it for a week or two. But for now, let's go ahead and unbox it. All right, so here's the box. Pretty standard stuff. We've got the stock wallpaper for the new M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros. I think it's a pretty cool wallpaper. Of course, I got this one in silver like I mentioned earlier on in the video. The box is pretty standard. It just says MacBook Pro there and then it's got an Apple logo on the sides. Let's go ahead and open it up. Alright, so here it is guys. I'm super excited to finally have a silver MacBook Pro. I think it's like maybe five, six years since I've had one. I'm switching all of my Apple devices over to the silver colorway, so I'm really excited for this. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box and take the pull tab off here. So we'll peel that off. You can see it says MacBook Pro engraved on the back. And there we are. I gotta say that looks really clean and minimal. I really love the silver finish from Apple. We've got the Apple logo on top, of course. And then on the sides here, we've got the HDMI 2.1 slot, USB-C, SD card reader. And then on the other side, we've got our MagSafe connector, two more USB-C ports, and then a headphone jack. The main difference this year with ports is that the HDMI is now 2.1 and the last model was 2.0. So if you're someone that has a really high-end monitor, like an 8K for example, that is going to help you a lot. Now let's take a look at what else comes inside of the box. So pretty standard stuff here guys, we've just got the charging cable. So here's the MagSafe end and then the USB-C end. It's about, uh, I would say about one meter long. And the cable is actually braided too, which is a really, really great detail that's going to make it a little bit more durable. So you shouldn't run into the problem of the cable fraying, or at least not as quickly as before. Then we've just got some paperwork here. So it says designed by Apple in California. If we open this up, you get your manual and you get some Apple stickers. And this is really weird because the stickers are black and I thought that would only come with the space gray model, but I guess not. So I guess what Apple's doing is just giving black stickers with the silver and space gray MacBook Pros instead of the traditional white that we've been getting for years. So that's that. Now let's look at the power brick here. So this is Apple's 140 watt adapter. It charges the laptop really, really quickly. And all you gotta do is just pull this down, plug it into the wall, and then grab your charging cable, plug it into here. And that's it, we've got an Apple logo on the front and the back. Now let's go ahead and set the MacBook Pro up. Alright guys, so it's all set up. It only took about 15 or 20 minutes. It's now up and running and just looking at it, I would say it looks pretty much identical to the last gen model, but I'm really, really liking the change to silver over space gray. Changing up the color of your devices just gives it a new fresh feeling, you know? Anyways, let's talk about the display on the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's the same as the last model. It's a mini LED backlit panel with 3456 by 2234 pixels that go up to 1600 peak brightness with an adaptive ProMotion display which gets up to 120 hertz refresh rate. So the display on the 16 inch is absolutely fantastic. Now the one thing that still kind of bugs me is that Apple still kept the notch on the MacBook Pro. You would think for an over $3,000 computer they would find a way to remove it but I guess not. Honestly it doesn't really bother me as much as it did with the M1 Pro MacBook Pro that I had last year. You kind of get used to it like I think I used the last 
last one for maybe an hour and then I was totally fine with the notch. But I do wish they found a way to make it a little bit more useful. Maybe make it similar to the Dynamic Island on the new iPhone 14 Pros. If they integrated that somehow into the notch on the MacBook Pros, I think that would be awesome. It would make it less of an eyesore and just make it really, really unique and useful. I guess we'll just have to wait and see for now, but I think that would be an amazing idea. The keyboard is your standard full-size backlit keyboard with Touch ID on the top right corner, and it's got the same great trackpad that Apple is known for. The speakers on the laptop are identical to the last model. I would have liked to see a little bit of an improvement there, but to be honest, the speakers on the last one sounded fantastic, so this one will too. Now, battery life did get a minor upgrade on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's not anything crazy by any means. It's literally one hour of a difference, and I know a lot of people won't even notice that. It is an upgrade nonetheless, although it is not going to be anything substantial. Like, I don't think people are going to line up outside of Apple just to get one hour better battery life. But I'm really, really hoping that maybe next year or the year after they do get a substantial jump, maybe like a three, four hour difference, for example. So with the minor battery upgrade on the new MacBook Pros, you can now get up to 18 hours on the 14 inch and 22 on the 16 inch, which is good. But like I said, it's not really going to be noticeable. Now on the new MacBook Pros, we still have a 1080p FaceTime camera, which looks pretty decent in well-lit areas. It's the exact same camera as the last model, but I gotta say 1080p is so much better than the 720p that we were stuck with for years. Now ports on this computer is the same as the last gen, but Apple has actually upgraded the HDMI to 2.1 instead of 2.0. So for all of you that have super high-end monitors, like an 8K monitor for example, that will be really great for you guys. But for the average person like myself, I'm not really going to use the benefit of a 2.1 HDMI anytime soon, so that upgrade doesn't really affect people like me. Now overall, I gotta say this MacBook Pro is pretty much identical to the last gen. I know I've said that like 14 times in this video already, but it's true. The design, the camera, the battery life's pretty much the same. The display, the keyboard, the ports are pretty much identical too. Everything about it is basically the same besides the chips. Like the firepower inside of the new MacBook Pro is what you're paying for. For. And if you're someone that has the previous gen MacBook Pros, I definitely don't recommend to get the new ones because they are so similar, like I've been saying. But there is a unique scenario that I do think it might be worth it depending on the type of work that you're using it for. And that situation is if you're someone that maybe has like the M1 Pro chip and you want to upgrade to the M2 Max chip, that's when you'll start to notice a pretty decent uh, change in performance. But if you're someone like myself that went from an M1 Pro to an M2 Pro, it's going to feel pretty much the same. So if you're going up chip levels, I think it makes sense. If you're staying around the same, it's pretty much going to be identical. And then there's also, I guess, a third scenario that I don't think a lot of people would uh, go with, and that is someone that maybe has like an M1 Max chip and downgrading to an M2 Pro. It doesn't really make sense, but I would say the majority of people are probably upgrading to this computer from a Mac that's maybe like four or five years old. So this is going to be an awesome machine. It is going to crush pretty much anything you can throw at it, and Apple is giving you the option of a 14 and 16 inch that you can customize to pretty much the same level because in the past they would always make the 16 inch like the super powerful version of the computer and then the 13 inch would always be like the lesser one so I'm glad that they're making the computers pretty much comparable performance wise but just different sizes now one thing I do want to note though is that if you get the m2 max you can really spec this out you can spec it out to 96 gigs of memory with an 8 terabyte ssd which is going to cost a crazy amount, but it is possible now it is going to be, you know, overkill for 99.999% of what people are using the computer for. But if you are someone that needs that kind of power, Apple is delivering it. Personally, I'm happy with the M2 Pro 16 inch. I think it's going to do everything that I need it to do. It's going to be super similar to the M1 Pro 16 inch that I had last year. And really, the only reason that I upgraded to this year's model is because I wanted more physical storage. So this one is one terabyte. So I'm getting pretty much double the amount of storage that I had on my last one. I just really like physical storage. I hate using SSDs that are external. So having more physical storage was a big component for me buying this. And then also, like I said, I'm switching over to silver. So I just really wanted a silver computer. And then the third reason is because I do YouTube. So by getting this computer, that means I can make a ton of videos on it. But if I was like the average person that doesn't make YouTube videos, no way in heck I would be upgrading from the M1 Pro to the M2 Pro. So guys, that's it for my unboxing of the M2 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys are 
new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. I post tech videos every single week, and I'll be posting a ton of videos on this computer, so stay tuned for more content. Also, let me know down below in the comments if you guys are planning on upgrading to the 2023 MacBook Pros and which one. So guys, thank you again for watching. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next video.